Hi everyone. In this video we have two questions, question 13 and 14, where we're solving quadratics using completing the square and then quadratic formula, which is a good, uh, good question, that one, question 14. And then in question five, uh, 15, we're looking at seeing how many solutions are in these quadratics using the discriminant law. So three questions, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is shown in red. Question 13. Now again, we're solving these quadratic equations, very similar to the last few questions. But this time, we're going to use the, the initial technique of, of factorising using by completing the squares instead of using the Fox family method. Because sometimes the Fox family method isn't completely neat with, with sometimes there's fractions and all sorts of things. So uh, completing the squares is another technique we can, we're going to use here. Okay, let's remember how to complete the square using my, my method. Bracket, whatever this letter is, x, always keep the sign, plus, and always half of this number. Half of 6 is 3. Close bracket, squared. That's the hard part done. All right. Now, whatever's left over here, this plus 3. And the last step, it's always minus this number squared. Well, 3 squared is just 9. And make that still equal to 0. Let's just tidy up this side, and then we can start solving. Well, we have x plus 3 squared. Now, on this side, it's going to be 3 minus 9 is negative 6. So I could write minus 6 equals 0, or I can just put to a positive on this side. Now, the reason why I did this is because we can end up solving for x here. To get rid of this bracket with a squared sign, we can take the square root. If we square root the x plus 3 squared, it just gets rid of it. That'll be the square root of 6. Now in an earlier video we discussed that if we take the square root of any, of any positive number, you have to get plus or minus because, uh, I'll use the example of 4, if we want to square root 4, well it's not just 2, it's also minus 2 because minus 2 squared is going to be positive 4. So, I'm going to show we have our plus or minus 6. And then to get our final answer, x equals plus or minus 6. And because we took 3 from this side, we take 3 from this side. So uh, there, is our, uh, there are our two answers for, for x. So I'll probably just write this again as x equals, I'll put the minus 3 first, plus or minus root 6. Because this may look a little bit more uh, easier to see that there are two answers, minus 3 plus root 6 or minus 3 minus root 6. So, two answers there. Okay, let's do the second one here. Let's complete the square again. Okay, completing the square method. Bracket, x, keep the sign, half of this number. So, 4, close bracket, square. Whatever's left here, plus 4. Oh, and this, this question must be equal to 0, so put, put that in there. And then minus this number squared. So it's going to be 16 and equal to 0. Okay, we can tidy this up. x plus 4 squared. Now 4 minus uh, 16 is negative 12. But I'm going, to, I'm going to make that positive 12 on the other side. Okay, and let's start solving for x. We go x plus 4 equals. Then we're going to take the square root. So it gets rid of the squared sign. And make this the square root of 12. Plus or minus, so always plus or minus. And finally, x will equal minus 4 by taking the 4 over, plus or minus the square root of 12. And there are our two solutions when we're completing the square. Question 14. Now, I've stepped in to do this question. This is John here. This is a personal favourite of mine. We're going to be solving these quadratics again, similar to previous, where we did the Fox family method, but this time we're going to use the quadratic formula. Now, that's a personal favourite of mine because I did uh, four years of engineering at school after, after graduating, and this came up over and over again. And if you're good at it, you can solve any quadratic really quickly. And we often used to have like little races, how fast we could do the quadratic formula. And you can solve one of these questions in about under a minute, and any type of quadratic. So, if you get good at this, you can pretty much do any type of question. It relies on you knowing the formula, which looks a bit scary, but write it out a few times and you'll get it. Now, I'll write it out for you. x 
equals minus b plus, and I'm going to explain it in a bit, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So this is what they call the quadratic formula. Now, when I say x equals, this is going to, when you say solving, you're going to find out what x equals. And it could be uh, no solutions, could be one solution, or could be two solutions. And we, ex we talk about that actually in the next question, question 15. And so we know that the form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. So in this example, I do this every time. a equals 1, b equals 3, c equals minus 2. And once you remember this formula, it's as simple as just plugging in the numbers. So x equals uh, minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared is just 9, minus 4 times 1, oh, I'll write it out, 4, uh, a is 1, and c is minus 2, all over 2 times a, which is just going to be 2 times 1. So let's go and minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. And this is going to be 4 times 1 times 2. So 4 times 1 is 4 times 2 is 8. Now you've got a minus and a minus. Minus times a minus is a positive. So it's going to be 9 plus 8 all over 2. Now I'm going to run out of room here, so I might just write that out. Let's bring it up here. So we've got x equals minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. Now, this one will have two answers. And how it has two answers is this plus or minus sign. So you're, I, this is how I do it. I'll get rid of this. I usually, so my teacher knows what I'm doing, or so I know what I'm doing. I draw two arrows. I put a plus here and I put a minus here. So for this plus, I'm going to use the plus sign. So x equals minus 3 plus square root of 17 on 2. And for this one, I'll use the minus sign. x equals minus 3 minus square root of 17 on 2. Now, these are, these are quite good answers here. Um, these are probably perfectly acceptable to go ahead and put as your final line in your exam. Or, if you're trying to find something like a length, where you actually want a decimal point, because that's quite hard to... Like, if I went and gave that to a a construction worker and said minus 3 plus square root of 17 over 2 millimetres, he's going to look at me pretty funny. So I'm going to go and find out what that actually is. Uh, minus 3 plus square root of 17 divided by 2, and that equals 0 0.56. And this one is the same, but with a minus sign. Minus 3, minus square root of 17 over 2, minus 3.56, rounding to two decimal places. So, when I say solving, I've solved this first quadratic, and these are my two solutions for the one on the left. I'll let you have a look at this before I go to the one on the right. Okay, so I'll do, wipe all this out, I'll wipe that out, and I'll wipe this out, and I'll leave the formula there. Okay, now for this one here, you've got a equals 1, b equals 4, c equals 1. Let's go and put those in. x equals minus 4, plus or minus the square root of 4 squared is 16, minus, I'm going to do this all in 1, minus 4 times 1 times 1, over 2 times 1. Um, let's bring this up over here. So x equals minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. Now draw your two lines, two arrows, we've got a plus and a minus. So x equals minus 4 plus square root of 12 on 2. And x equals, so it's, it is and, they're, they're both solutions, it's not or. x equals minus 4 minus, can I see that? Yep, square root of 12 on 2. Uh, they are, they are, they're not final answers. I can go ahead and do some, um, I can either go straight to a decimal or I could do make thirds of this. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I won't labour on thirds. You've probably seen it before. 
So that equals minus 4 plus, this can be written as 4 times 3, so it can be written as 2 square root 3 over 2, and this can be written as uh, minus 4 minus 2 square root 3 on 2. I'm going to go for space here. Okay, um, I'll move this across. Okay, so now I've got, uh, I can now, so I bring this up here, I'm going to divide, I can divide the top line, both terms by 2, so x equals minus 2 plus square root 3, and x equals minus 2 uh, min minus square root 3. So, there are my two solutions for the one on the right. I could also write that as maybe x equals minus 2 plus or minus square root 3, just to make it a little bit neater. There we go. Question 15. This question looks at finding how many solutions are there in these quadratics using what we call the discriminant. Okay, now you're probably thinking, what the hell is a discriminant? Remember in question 14, I taught you the quadratic formula. And I've written that here. Now the discriminant is this little part here on the right hand side of the top line. I'm just going to dot around it in red pen. It doesn't actually include the square root signs. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Now what's so good about the discriminant is it tells you how many solutions these quadratics will have. So in my example in question 14, my, uh, my quadratics usually had two solutions um, and they sometimes have one solution and they sometimes have no solutions. It's either going to be no solutions, one solution, or two solutions. And that will become important later on when you start graphing quadratics. And a solution means how many times the quadratic, or your graph, which is curved like a smiley face, cuts the x-axis. So if it cuts the x-axis like that, it has two solutions. It cuts the x-axis twice. If it only has one solution, it will mean it just touches the x-axis. If it has no solutions, it means it's sitting somewhere up here. It never actually has any x-intercepts. It doesn't touch it. So that's, this is why it's important. Now, how do we find out? It's actually quite a quick process. How many solutions there are using this discriminant? Well, it's going to be three scenarios. If it's uh, less than one, so I'm going to use proper, proper maths. So that means less than one. Sorry, if less than zero. Mistake there. If it's less than zero, there will be no solutions. I'll write solutions just as that. If it is zero, there will be one solution. And if it is greater than zero, there will be two solutions. So when you go and calculate this discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, and I'm going to show you in a sec with these three examples, if your answer for the discriminant is less than zero, there'll be no solution to the quadratic. Zero, there'll be one solution. And if it's greater than zero, you'll have two solutions. Okay, I'll, I'll leave that there and I'll, I'll go and squeeze it in here. So, we need to, for all of these, find out what b squared minus 4ac is. So this is a, this is one, b here and c here. So b squared will be 25 minus 4. Uh, I usually write, I don't, I like to write in brackets, not time signs. A, c is 3, and that equals 25 minus 12 is, so it's 13. So our discriminant is greater than 0. Okay, so there'll be two solutions. Let's look at the second one now. We've got b as 6, so 6 squared is 36 minus 4 uh, times 1 times 9, and that equals 36. Now, 4 nines is 36, so 36 minus 36 is 0. So here's an example where the discriminant equals 0, so it's going to be one solution. 
Last one now. B, so you're going to have 9 with B squared, so 3 squared is 9, minus 4 by A, which is 4, by C, which is 1, and 9 minus, well, 4 times 4 times 1 is 16. Okay, so uh, that will be, that'll be negative number. That'll be minus 7. So that is going to be less than zero. Uh, up here, that'll be less than zero. So there'll be no solutions to this quadratic. And that's how you do these questions here. It's pretty simple, really.